Hi, and welcome along to the next in our series of videos on container security fundamentals. In the last video, we were taking a look at the process or PID namespace and how it helps isolate resources visible to containers running on a Linux machine. Today, we're going to continue our view of namespaces by taking a look at the net or network namespace. So let's just remind ourselves a little bit about how namespaces work in Linux. As we've mentioned before, there are currently eight namespaces in Linux. Each of these namespaces helps to isolate resources visible to a given process or set of processes. Of these eight namespaces, six of them are available by default in Docker, and then the user namespace is available as an option in Docker, and the time namespace is not currently enabled within Docker containers. So today, what we're going to do is take a look at the network namespace, which is used to isolate networking information like IP addresses and firewall rules from inside a container. So let's take a look at a demonstration. What we have here is our standard Linux host with Docker running on it. Now, if we want to, um, for example, run up a container, which we can do, let's start a new container. Uh, we'll give it a name, we'll call it web server. We'll run it in the background and we'll use the nginx container image. So when we've started this container, it will have been assigned a new network namespace and it will have been given some IP addresses, uh, a local host or loopback address, and also an IP, a standard IP address for communicating with other systems. Now, one of the things you might want to do with a container is actually look inside the container and say, hey, what IP addresses do you have? And logically, you might think, well, I can just run the IP command or the ifconfig command depending on which of those you prefer inside my container to get that information. So let's try and do that. Oops. Docker exec web server IP ADDR. So let's just try to run the IP ADDR command inside our container. And in this case, that fails. And the reason it fails is the IP binary is not available inside the container. So that's a bit kind of annoying. However, what we can do here is we can make use of Linux namespaces and the fact that we know these, these containers are using Linux namespaces to actually get around this problem. We can use container-aware tooling like NSenter, which is a tool we've used in the past, to actually run commands using binaries from the underlying host inside our container. This is generally quite a useful technique if you're trying to debug containers where the container image has been you know, stripped of any binaries, which is quite a common thing in more modern container images. So to do this, first what we need to do is we need to have a look and see what the process ID of our Nginx service is. And you can see here that the first process ID of one of our Nginxes is 7284. So then what we can do is we can say sudo ns enter, and we can say man minus, minus target. We'll give it the PID in question, 7284. Then we'll say inside the network namespace, run the command IP ADDR. Now this uses the IP command from the underlying host, so it doesn't need to be present in the container image. And what you'll see when you come, when that comes back is we actually have the information about the loopback address and also the other IP address available inside the container. So this is a good example of how knowing that containers use Linux namespaces is handy when you're debugging and troubleshooting. For example, if you want to do anything with kind of networking, that you can do that using binaries in the underlying host because of the use of namespaces. So another way in which this is used is actually um, with Docker itself. Docker is quite flexible in allowing containers to join namespaces. And you saw this last time in our last video when we used the PID namespace. But we can do it again with the, um, with, with the uh, network namespace. Say, for example, we wanted to start a debug container to debug that web server. So we've got some problem with the web application running. And what we want to do is we actually want to run a debug container next to it and actually look at what's going on there. We can do that using Docker. So if we do Docker run, uh, we're going to run interactive. We'll give this container a name. We'll call it debug web server. And then we'll, what we can do is we can pass this network parameter and we can say, give me the network of the container called web server. Under the covers, what that's doing is joining the process from our new container to the network namespace from the web server container. And we'll use an image. I'm going to use one of my standard kind of debugging images. And then 
we'll run the bash shell inside that. And so we start up a standard container. But what we can do here is we can say, show me all the listening processes. And you can actually see here, these are the listening processes from the, uh, from the other container. So if you wanted to debug them, if you wanted to interact with them, you can do that here using um, um, standard tooling. Now you'll notice here on the right hand side that actually what we can't see is the process IDs. If you want to do that, then you can actually share the process namespace from the other container. And you'll see that an example of that command in our previous video. So that again is another way of how containers make use of namespaces, in this case, the network namespace. And we can do that for sort of debugging and troubleshooting. The other thing way in which you could use this is you can also use it in Kubernetes. So the Kubernetes debug command, which essentially allows you to debug pods running in a cluster, actually uh, works in the same way. It essentially makes use of network namespaces and network namespace sharing to have the same effect. But that's more handy if you're, you know, if you're working in a Kubernetes environment. Hopefully this has kind of given you an idea of how you can quickly make use of network namespaces when you're troubleshooting and debugging containers. What we'll be doing in our next video is we're going to carry on and look some more at other namespaces that are used by Docker containers. Also, if you'd like additional information uh, about um, namespaces and about other network isolation features and container security fundamentals, you can follow this entire blog series on which these videos are based on our Security Labs website. Thanks very much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.